Okay, so I've now added a one category, which is tech. I've added an author, which is myself, and I've added four posts. And with the posts, just to give a good idea of what it would really look like, I've added some proper dummy text from this website, lorypsum.net. I've just added like everything that we possibly can have. So we can see how that looks on our blog. So we're pretty much done with our backend now. So if I just close out of that, and then I'm gonna hit Sanity Deploy, then we are pretty much good to go with our front end. Now, in here, let me just open up our front end in Terminal, and then I'm gonna run npm run dev. And that's gonna start our Next.js front end. So while that starts up, let me just get out this back end. We will be waiting for our local host to come through. Um, let's have a look. So we've got our front end here. So let's just open up our pages. So here we go. And then let me just zoom in a little bit, make that a little bit bigger, hopefully. You can still see that, okay. Um, all right, so the Next.js application, basically, inside this pages folder, we will be able to add a file. So you could add a file, say, about.js, and that will create a new route, localhost 3000. Um, forward slash about and that's one of the good things about next and the great thing about next is the static site generation and server side rendering things like that there's lots of cool stuff to talk about however let's let's dive into the coding um, and hopefully this will make sense the api folder within a next.js app basically any file that you have in here will become an api route and when you deploy your app it will be served as a serverless function so that is uh, really cool, but we're not actually using any API routes for this project. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file called client.js. And this is where I'm gonna import, uh, I'll just call it sanity from sanity for slash client. And then I wanna export a default sanity. And then that's just going to take an object. It needs a project ID. So if you go into the back end, we've got our project ID inside the, where has it gone? Sanity.json, this one here. So I'm just going to copy that and project ID. So that's that. Our data set is going to be production because we left it at the default. And then for now, I'm just going to say UCDN as false. False. There we go. And that is our sanity client configured. So the first thing that we need to do now is think about how do we get data into our application and Actually, let's install Tailwind. I totally forgot about that one. Um, so if we just go into Tailwind CSS, Next.js, install. Um, the docs for this are great. So if we just take, oh, take this. So it's gonna install the latest version of Tailwind CSS, post CSS, and auto prefixer. We're then going to initialize post CSS and Tailwind CSS. We can add in here to the Tailwind config now to um, actually purge the CSS. So Tailwind config purge. So we've got pages.js is what we're gonna be using. Um, like so, 
And I think we can just leave it like that and it will do all of them actually. So we can just leave it like that. Um, so that's gonna make sure if we deploy to production, it would be purged. And finally, we can just import Tailwind CSS into our app.js file. So we don't need that. We don't need our styles folder either because we're not gonna write any CSS styles. Ugh. Okay, so in our index page, let's just delete all of this and export default function home. And then for now, that's just going to return. Let's just say div, which has a h1 saying hello. So when we restart our server now, npm run dev, we should be saying hello. Now, the inspiration for this blog, it was the Twitter blog. Now, ours isn't gonna look like, exactly like the Twitter blog, but this is what we're going for. We're not gonna put too much effort into making it perfect. However, this is definitely our inspiration. Um, I need to find the deployed version of the platform. So I'm just going to log in off screen and pull it up. Ah, so it's saying it's not deployed. Why is it not deployed? Ah, studio host name, Adam's blog. Okay, cool. It will deploy in a second. So that means we need to go to Adam's blog studio and that should hopefully load up here momentarily. So back into our index page. Let's have a think about what we what we actually want to do. So the first thing that we need to do is our data fetch. Now we want this to be a completely static website and in order to make it happen, we're gonna fetch our data using get static props. So I'm just gonna export an async function called get static props and within this function we are going to do our data calling and eventually we want to be able to just say okay give us the posts so that's what we're aiming for so let's see how we go about doing that so first thing we're going to need is we're going to need the client so if we import client from dot 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 client, um, which is this. So we're just doing a default export, so it doesn't really matter what we call it. So we've got the client there, which we're gonna, I'm gonna use here in a sec. We're gonna use Brock, as I mentioned, and this uh, this just basically gives us syntax highlighting. Um, we don't, it's not really necessary, but we're gonna use it anyway. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a query. So I'm gonna say comes query equals Brock, if you use GraphQL, it's kind of similar. Um, so we're gonna put our query inside of here. Now, all queries essentially start with this underscore type equals, and we want the type of post. <laughs> and essentially that, that's it for now. Um, we're not gonna do anything, anything further right this minute. So then I just want to say const data equals await client.fetch and I'm going to pass in that query. And then from our guest that I props function, we're going to return props like this and we're going to return posts, which is going to be the data. And that should be us done. So if we now console log posts on the front end, so remember, inside guest static props, this is happening on the server, and this console log is going to happen on the front end. So we're going to see it within our browser. Okay. So if we refresh this, we open up our console. We have now got an array of posts. So if you've ever used like a REST API or anything like that before, you will um, you will have done similar things, but 
I think the, it would be a lot more for boars, um, and you'd have to declare a route and things like that. We don't need to do that with Croc, and we're going to actually end up querying for our homepage data as well. So on my other screen, let me just pull it. Oh, no, I did it over here, didn't I? Yeah, so we've got this um, Sanity Studio now that we should be able to connect to. And let's actually, um, oh, so we already did our homepage. I didn't think we'd done our homepage. So that's cool. So we also can get our homepage data. So what I want to do now is this query here is just getting one thing. I don't want to make multiple queries. Instead, what I want to do is I just want to merge queries together. And I want to say something like posts is this. And that's going to get us all of our posts. And now I want to say home is, and we do the same thing. So underscore type equals, and then we called it home page. Home page. And then we're going to return home as well. Home is data dot home. Post is data dot post. And then we will console load post and home. So let's go and have a look at this now. So we've got an array of posts, and then we've got an array with our homepage data. So actually, we don't want um, on our homepage here, we'll do data home zero. Because we, there's only ever going to be one, and that's all we want is the very first one. OK, perfect. So we've got our posts, and we've got our homepage data. So we can start building out our homepage. So this was our inspiration. So you'll see we've got a few, a few different pieces to the puzzle, I guess. We've got this main area, um, which has got kind of a, a max width on it. We've got this header area, and then we've got the, the main body right here with the posts. So let's just start with the layout. So the function home, instead of returning a div with hello, let's return a div. And we're going to give that the, the background. Uh, so do bj-gray-300. And that's going to be for the literally the whole page. And then we want to do another div. And this is one we want to limit the width. So we say max-width. Uh, for some reason, we're not getting um, we're not getting our tailwind stuff. Max dash width dash, I think it's screen dash 2XL. And we want to put this in the center, MXR on. And then the background of that one is white. So, okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to restart VS Code and everything. I think we've done a lot in this video. We've got all of our data fetching done. I'm going to restart VS Code. I'm going to get my tailwind. IntelliSense up and running so we can get this done quickly um, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, welcome back. So if you hit if you're on Windows control space um, or on Mac command space, you should see a list of um, tailwind classes. So essentially I have just started writing tailwind classes without really talking about tailwind. Um, essentially tailwind allows us to style our website. So if you just watch this animation, it allows us to style the website by adding utility classes. And in the background, these utility classes compile to regular old CSS classes that it will apply for you. But you know, you're going to see here, we're going to make a, a pretty neat design. We're not going to use any, any custom CSS at all. And I say custom, we're not actually going to write any CSS. All we're going to do is apply these utility classes. So when you see here, they're, they're writing flex. It's just adding the CSS um, display flex. Um, where we're saying MD, this is how we do responsive design. We're going to get into this, but essentially it means anything above the medium breakpoint, add this property. Any screen size above medium, add this property. So we'll get into that. But for now, let's uh, let's see where we're up to. I forgot what we've done. 
Yeah, so we've got our data and we're building out our front end now. So we've got our main container div here. So this is the outer most container and we've got our container div here. And then essentially I want to be able to say something like hero um, and pass in this home data to the hero. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's make, uh, let me say if that, it's not going to work, but let's make a new folder. So components and a new file, call it hero.js. And within this hero, we're going to be doing quite a few things. But for now, let's uh, export default function hero. And we want to return inside this hero, it's going to be a div. And this div is going to be this large container div that we see here. So let's um, let's just put in here the hedge mon hello, and let's get this actually working. So import hero from components slash hero. So that should now be working. Okay, so you can see we've got our the little bars to the side there. Um, and we've got our main white background. Um, so we need to add this image and this text. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need is with sanity images. Let me go through this now. So with sanity images, when we add an image like this homepage image, we can actually crop the image and declare like a a focal point. So you can see underneath where it's a square, we're defining which corner, so to speak, is coming out. Where it's panorama, it's defining an area. So essentially, we're making this for client. We want them to be able to come on and, you know, crop images in the back end and for our front end to respect those crops. You know, if we gave this to a client and they uploaded a photo and they cropped something out of it, but then it still appears on the front end, you know, that would be frustrating. So the way that we do that is by using the Sanity um, Image Builder. So I'm going to, we installed Sanity Image URL at the beginning um, here. So that's a package we're gonna use now. So we're gonna import image URL builder uh, from uh, Sanity Image URL. We're also gonna need next image from next image. We're going to need the client because we need to give the client to the image URL builder. So this is from client. And I think that's it. So let's make our image builder function. So if we say account builder equals image URL builder and we pass that the client. We now have this um, builder. So let's make a function. So anytime we want to display an image, we're going to use this function. We're just going to call it URL for, um, which is going to take in the source. And then it's going to return, it's going to use builder.image, and it's going to return um, the image uh, that we can actually use. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's look into getting the image in here. So if we say image, what I want to do, we can use next image uh, and we can either define a height and a width or we can, excuse me, get it to just fill the whole layout. So I just want to get it to fill the whole layout. So I'm just going to say layout, uh, layout equals fill. And we're going to say source equals, and then we say URL for, we pass in. So if you remember, this hero is taking in the home data, the home props that we pass in here. And the image, what is it called? Main image. So it's more than likely, yeah, main image. 
And you see here, we've got an asset, which is a ref, like, you know, this is why we're using the builder. So yeah, we're gonna take the URL for, we're gonna say home.main image, and then we're just gonna say dot URL. And that should give us our image. <laughs> Unless we messed something up, it looks like we did. Um, invalid source prop on a next image. Yep, so what we need to do is add a next config. So next image is not something that I talked about. Let me just add this and I'll be able to show you better. So create a next.config.js. I'm gonna say module.export. It's gonna export an object. We're gonna say images. And then we're gonna add a domains array. And then it was cdn.sanity.ir, I believe. So because we've changed the next config, we need to restart our front end like so. So next image is, you can see all the documentation on it here, but next image, essentially, it will optimize your images for you. You will normally pass it a width and height, so it prevents cumulative layout shift, which is an important, um, it's an important core web vital, which is gonna start impacting SEO real soon. And essentially it takes in a source, uh, an alt tag, a width, a height, or you can set the layout to fill as I did, um, which is going to take the height of the parent element. So, okay, so we're back up and running and we've got our image and it's taken the height of our parent element, perfect. So in order to get this to work properly, um, the first thing actually, let me just finish talking about next image. If we just refresh right now and look at our network tab, we can see that this is a WebP image and it's actually an image set. And the size is 562 kilobytes. The size of this will, I mean, that's still too big, but the size of this will have actually been around about um, three, four megabytes. So it's compressed that quite a bit. Um, we would definitely work to compress this ourselves. Um, although that is beyond the scope of the video, user next image is a, is a big head start though. So yeah, clearly this isn't how we want it. So let's go back into our front end. And in order to use this layout fill properly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a class name. I'm gonna make this image absolute. And then I'm gonna add a div which is gonna be the parent div, and I'm just gonna give it relative positioning. So that means that this image will fill um, whatever this class name has. So let me just do the biggest size that Tailwind has. And there we go, you can see it's respecting it right now. Um, although that isn't quite big enough. So what I'm going to show you is how to extend Tailwind CSS. So we want to actually extend our theme. We want to extend the spacing. So we might want to say, because um, we can say at the moment like width 96 or height 96. So we want to be able to say like width 128. This is just the example from the Tailwind website and just remember it. These are normal numbers that I use. Um, 36 RAM. So now, we can set a height of 144, where we couldn't before because one, uh, 96 was the biggest. Okay, perfect. So that is looking, yeah, about right. Um, probably a little bit big, but that is not a problem. So now that we've got the image respecting the, um, the sizing. Let's have a look. Actually, I very, very don't like doing this in this way. So like desktop first, I much prefer doing mobile first. So let's actually add object cover so it, it's not stretched and, and blurred like that. Um, much better. And I think that that is absolutely fine as it is right now. So the next thing I want to do is add 
text on top of this. So inside of here, I'm gonna create another div. And this div is going to be also positioned absolute. So uh, let me just put a pillow the image. It, it doesn't actually make a difference, but I just wanna be more organized. So if we do this, class name equals absolute. And let me say the height of this is gonna be full, the width of it's gonna be full. And let's start adding stuff. So we can finally start adding the homepage data. So we can say h1, and inside of here, we can put in the home.title. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but it has appeared there. Um, and then we can put in a paragraph, and we can say in here, we want the home.description. And there we go. That is on there now. So clearly we need to style these. So if we just say text is gonna be white. Um, I want this to flex. It should be a flex row, uh, flex column, sorry. Otherwise it'll stack side by side. I want to do justify end, which is gonna push them to the bottom of the column, as you can see there. I will do some padding at the bottom to lift them up. And yeah, I think that's cool for that. Oh, for the div we need to add. So if we do padding px-8 or px-6, that's gonna add six pixels of padding on the left and the right. So it's not right at the edge. Okay, so that's cool. So let's add the title. So let's make this a bit bigger. Bold and that's that's cool, very good. So class name here. Um, again, we want this probably a bit bigger, and I don't actually want it to be white. Just give it a bit of a background. Now, because we're leaving this in client's control, um, you know, you can kind of read this text, but it's not it's not great. So what I want to do is, and this is a technique where you're you're putting text on top of an image. What I wanna do is I wanna create just another div um, and I'm just gonna add some classes to it. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be positioned absolute. It's gonna be with full, height full. It's gonna have a background of blue 900, background opacity. Let's set to something like 70. That should be good for now. And yeah, so you don't see it now. So if we do the Z index of that of 10, so it goes above the image, that's perfect. And then if we change the Z index of this, so it's 20, so it goes above that, you can see now the text is just so much more visible. Um, so even if the, they put like a really white image behind it and we have white text, you will still see it. And if you had a, I don't know, an image that was that had a lot of yellow in it, again, it would mess up the color scheme of your website, whereas now it, it shouldn't because we have um, we have this sorted out. So let's have a look at the responsive styles for this. So you can see on Twitter here, it comes a bit further away when it's responsive. Okay, so I now need to sort out the responsive styles. So what I can do on this div is if you look at the Twitter blog, compared to ours, it's got um, a, a much bigger margin where we have a light screen. So let's do that. So we'll say here, if the screen is small, we'll add pixels, uh, pattern X of 12. Um, and if it's large, let's add 28 pixels of pattern, um, which yeah pushes it a lot further there. We need our social media icons and we already brought in React icons for that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new component actually. Let's call it social icons.js export default function social icons. Um, let's get a let's return a div and yeah, can I just do this? FA uh, no. It's not that good. So if I import 
from React icons file slash fa fa Facebook. It will probably work now. FA Facebook. FA Twitter. FA Instagram. Uh, what else do we want to do? Let's just do FA GitHub. Um, like so. And then on here I can do this. So I can pass in a color prop like this. So we'll take a color. Just in case we want to use them in the in the footer uh, along with this header. So we'll take in the footer prop and let's just add text uh, to Excel or something like that for now. Um, and let's see what we've got. Let's have a look at it. Um, of course we'll need to display that flex. So within our hero, underneath, or in inside this div, sorry, let's import our social icons. Okay, looking good. Um, so we'll do space x4, and maybe three. Actually, let's do four and just make them bigger. Yeah, that's good. And I think let's just do a default a little bit of margin. Actually, no, let's leave that off just in case. We'll do it manually here. So let's get it looking good here. So we'll do margin bottom 10 maybe. Um, and then from the title, let's do margin bottom of, let's try 10. Let's do four. Yeah. I think maybe if we reduce that to six, maybe just do four so it's even. Mm, I prefer six. Don't know why, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Okay, if you wanted to actually add these, by the way, um, because they're going to go to external places, I would just add the links like this. Um, so you would just put this icon here inside like that. Um, add the link to your page and then do target as mom and it will open in a in a new tab I'm not going to really concern with adding links. It's just there for the just there for the style of it more so than anything Okay, so I think this is looking good now We've got our social icons. They're default into white, but just color equals and then if I said text dash blue dash 400 um, we can see they're blue um, because we want them white, like so. So that is cool. Um, and you could potentially take a, if you're making these into links, I would recommend also passing in a hover color as well. And you can, you can add an on hover to all of your link classes. And so if you're surrounded that with a link like so, let's just do it. Um, on one of these, so pass a class name equal, and we'll say hover. We're gonna do it like this, don't we? Uh, what we're we doing? Hover, and then we pass in hover color, like so. I'm just gonna take hover color, and then social icons. We'll say hover color equals text dash greater dash 200. Um, yeah, so that's looking peachy. So if I, oh, so I copy that and add it here, here, and here. And I wanna put that below, that below. Is that done? I think so. Okay, so we're working on all of them now. Um, so you just put the links to your pages like so. Okay, cool. Then you know the reason we're passing in these props. If you wanted to put it in a footer, and the footer was white, clearly you would want these icons to be you know dark gray and the hover color a slightly lighter gray. Um, with Tailwind and adding in sort of responsive styles like this, make sure you like you wouldn't do um, in this. You wouldn't do anything incomplete so where we've got color we're just rendering the full color here you wouldn't do um text 
dash color dash 300 to change your color because that is going to when you purge your CSS it's not going to actually um, bring in all of the colors that you that you're able to set within your application okay so this is looking just fine for now I think actually we need to increase the sizing when we are when we're in full screen mode so h1 let's say if we're above um if we're above let's say medium um text dash six xl and that one can probably stay the same yeah looks fine 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 Okay, cool. So let's bring that back. Um, next thing is using our blog posts. So you can see in our console, we're fetching our blog posts each time, or at least I thought we were. Um, let's go back to our index page, console log posts. So we should be console logging them. Yeah, so we're getting a post array, and each array has in the quite a few properties. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a break right now. Um, and I will see you in the next video and we're going to style out the blog posts.